another beautiful fish folks and let me tell you I'm learning a valuable lesson today about my fishing because I've neglected an area of my swim that served me so well recently let's just show you this fish there you go cracking carp we're catching loads of carp and f1s today it's a beautiful fish maybe three and a half four pound we're doing a little bit of a photo shoot and filming for dynamite baits so we're showcasing a few different baits i'm going to show you something that shows you how simple fishing can be especially if you've got you know a bit like today you've got half the lake to yourself if you're pleasure angling or if you even if you're in a match situation and you've got a couple of spare pegs to one side you've got to make most of the margins no matter what time of year it is and i fell foul of that today i've neglected that area of my swim for way too long we've caught loads of fish casting across the island but it's this margin to my left hand side which is really kicking off so come in let me show you what we've been doing i've got with me a few different baits today We've got a few maggots, so I'd have liked to have bought some dead maggots, but these are live maggots. We'll just we'll kill them for hook baits in a minute. We've got a bit of black swim stim. This is the amino back. And we've got our micros. These are the swim stim original two mil micros. You know, they're the standard sort of micro pellet that you're gonna put around your method feeder or your hybrid feeder. And that's what I'm using at the minute. So this is the important part. I'm using a little tiny hybrid feeder. The trouble with that is, that's not enough bait for these fish. It's not enough to attract fish into the swim. We need to feed some bait. So in this margin, we're at the time of day now where the fish want a little bit of feed. I'm using my catapult to just introduce 15 or so pellets down my margin. And I'm doing that twice so by doing it twice extra rattle on the water more bait falling through the water water column we know that attracts fish if we were to put 30 pellets in in one go they're going to sink it's only one rattle of bait on the water surface one lot of pellets falling through the water i think i'm getting double the attraction there so we've now fed our swim what i want to do is cast my little parcel over the top we're taking one of our maggots Maggots are a great bait for method feeder fishing because they're nice and light. I'm giving it a roll because we want a dead maggot. We don't want a live maggot, we want to kill him. So he sits in our little hybrid feeder perfectly. He's softened up as well nicely. Small hook, that's a size 18 with our single maggot on. Remember, we're fishing for carp and F1s today. So we want a small hook bait, small hook, light line. We've got a lovely soft rod, we can get away with small hooks and light line. We've got three inches of 012, so that breaks at just over three pound. Obviously we've got a knot in that, so it's going to break at a lot less, but that's light when you think about method feeder fishing. But like I say, fishing for smaller fish, F1s, carp, they've seen it all before. We're at that time of the year where these fish have probably been caught, I don't know how many times they've been caught during the summer, but they've been caught plenty of times, they've seen it all year. We need to scale down. Here we're allowed elasticated feeders, which means I want to use it. I want to use elastic. I think you can use a lot lighter end tackle with elastic, and you miss less bites as a result. We've got pink shock core in there. It's probably the equivalent to something like eleven hollow in Preston or white hydro if you want to use diary elastic. That sort of strength, rated probably ten to twelve, something like that. Nice and stretchy. And then we've got our little hybrid feeder. It's an 18 gram feeder. We don't need anything too heavy. We're only plopping it short. We're not fishing on any steep shelves. So we've just got an 18 gram feeder there. Let's talk. Well, actually, we'll cast out, then we'll talk about the rest of the gear. So let's load this feeder. First layer goes in nice and firmly. We'll put our maggot in the middle, and then we'll put our second layer on. And I'm almost fully burying that maggot. There we go, 
finished feeder. We don't need to pile it up. Remember, we're not trying to attract the fish with this feeder. We're attracting the fish with those pellets that we've just loose fed. So this is our trap. This is the trap that's going to catch those fish. This is the cherry in the middle of the cake. So it's just a, a little underarm plop in amongst those feeder, in amongst those pellets. Now you, you might be able to get behind my tip there and see the bite. That's if we get a bite. Right, while that fish is, real line is 018 suffix advance. I've been chucking over to the island today with that really light feeder. And by using 018, there's less drag in the water, less drag on that feeder. I can keep that feeder in place. 018 in suffix, of, suffix advance is a really strong line. So I'm not having any problems landing big fish either. The rod, it's a free spirit. It's a CTX feeder light 10 footer. It's purposely made for fishing for skimmers, F1s, and it's gonna handle big carp, but it's a soft rod. We're using small hooks, light line. We want a soft rod. We're not all about bullying big fish to the net. This fish is gonna handle fishing to double figures, but we're not trying to catch them at record breaking speed. We're just taking our time. Reel, it's an Akuma, it's an Invicta. A brilliant workhorse reel. Great drag on it. Like I say, we're fishing with light, light gear. We want something that's got a really nice drag and, and matches the rod nicely. Hopefully you can see on the tip, we're getting a few line bites already. There's plenty of fish down the margins. We've had, you've just seen us catch that nice big carp. We've had quite a few F1s. We've had some decent carp as well down there. It's a, it's a case of sitting tight now on your hands and ignoring those line bites. We don't want to be striking at anything until that tip flies round and that rod decides to try and make its way into the water. Feeding wise, I don't know if we're going to pick up the catapult now until maybe two minutes into the cast. We've fed that initial amount of bait, those 30, 30 odd pellets. We've put our cherry in the middle. Now it's up to the fish to hopefully spring our trap, suck in that single maggot and spring the trap. If we get two minutes in, I'll probably reel this in and then we'll have another cast and repeat the process. Feed those hard pellets over the top, those six mils, and then we'll flick the method feeder over the top, that little hybrid feeder over the top. I do think that this time of year, small feeders are the way to go. If you think about a big feeder, when those micros have broken down around the feeder, there's a lot of area that if one fish comes in, there's a lot of area that the fish can peck away at that feeder and potentially miss your hook bait. A small feeder, it offers a small parcel of bait, one or two sucks around that feeder, and all the loose feed is gone. And I think in amongst those one or two sucks, there's a great chance he's going to pick up your hook bait, and that's ultimately what we're looking to do. You might also have noticed that my hook, it's tied knotless knot. I think it cuts down on my prep time massively because I just tie up knotless knots with uh, hair rigs with bands on. But I also think when I'm fishing this style, fishing knotless knot is a much stronger way and you get a better hook hold when the fish is actually lifting up and you're not striking into the fish. The fish is actually lifting up into some weight, i.e. the feeder. The knotless knot creates a really nice angle between the hook length and the hook so you can see line bites all the time we might have a recast in a second because we're fishing so close to our fishing position it's so quick to to do everything let's have a, a recast and we'll see if we can That maggot's okay. We'll feed over the top of the feeder this time because it's been it's been working really well. That has. So again, we're in there. We're not loading the feeder really high. Just enough there to attract a fish to that feeder. I reckon it's about two and a half, three foot deep there. I don't like having a really locked round tip when I'm 
method feeder fishing. We've got a bolt rig in on is in that method feeder, so that hybrid feeder, so we don't need to have a locked round tip. We're still going to see the bites. Most bites have been coming within 30 seconds or so of the feeder going in the water. Hopefully we get one on this chuck. So we can prove the point to everybody that this is the way to go. There we go. Cool. That's a bite, wasn't it? So as always, nice soft rod, keeping the rod low. It's all about getting the angles right with this. Because obviously, as we all know, quite often when we lift up with that little tiny hook, if we don't get everything right, that's when we lose our fish, when we've got the rod above the fish. So we only want to lift up when we need to. We'll try and land the fish. There we go. Lovely little dark carp or cracking fish. Now, even though he's small, he's an old fish. He's seen it all before, but he's hungry. And that's why he's in the margins. Like I say, don't neglect one of the best areas of your swim, just because the water's getting a little bit cold. Until next time, folks, tight lines.